Welcome back. I'm Calvin, aka Statue Fanatic, here with another review. And what a review it is. This is, of course, a review of Figurama's Diorama of Helsing Alucard. Wow. But before I get into this statue, I have to go on a rant real quick about something. Um, you may be seeing it if I decided to show it. My attempt at an unboxing of this guy, I got so frustrated I gave up. I wasn't even in this room when I actually started doing the unboxing. It just went left really, really quickly. My biggest frustration came from trying to put it together because I thought this has probably been one of the most challenging pieces that I've ever put together. And what made it so challenging was, one, there's a ton of freaking pieces, but aside from that, it's the instructions. Oh my God, it does come with an instruction booklet. Thank you, Figurama, for doing that. Thank you. However, however, it wasn't all correct. There were pieces in here that were in the wrong places on this little diagram that I'm trying to fit on these particular pieces and they actually don't go on those particular pieces. They go on another place on the statue. There was one particular one that frustrated the hell out of me so much until I'm looking for number 33, which it, it says it, it says it, it says it, 33 right there. I, it's right there, it says 33. So I'm going through the book trying to find where to place 33. There's no 33! It's not there! Oh God, it was so frustrating. So I gave up on that. You know what I did? I just started finding holes and pieces and seeing if they fit. Two hours later, I figured it all out. It does all fit. It came packaged extremely well. Thank you, Figurama, for that. Uh, nothing was broken, none of that stuff, but I'd be damned if it was not a challenge putting this thing together. I do not understand how in the world. Uh, I ordered this three years ago, and I saw this. George uh, went to Japan, uh, maybe three years, a little bit more, three years ago, I guess. And that was the first time I saw this. And I know those guys put a much larger scale version of this together, uh, the prototype of this with no instructions to my understanding. I don't know how the hell you guys were able to put this together without any instructions. Man, I, I, I could see George doing it because he does all that Lego stuff and he's good at that stuff. I'm not good at that stuff. I need real precise instructions. Now, that was my rant. Now let's talk about the statue. Um, in the box, of course, like I said the instructions came in the box, but it also came with this beautiful, beautiful art print of the statue. I was so seriously impressed with this. This was just, this is really cool. I love the fact that they included that. And of course it was in the packaging with their classic uh, uh, wax seal, which is really a nice touch uh, as well. And so that came in there. We'll talk about this little guy here, which is another really awesome thing when I get to that part and I'll tell you what this is about too. But let's get to the statue. First of all, let me do it once around so you can just see how massive this statue is. This is one really, really big statue. Oh my God. Um, I thought, I, I saw it, in, I saw um, Attack on Titan by Caleb in person and that was really big. But I, I never saw this one because when I went to Japan, this wasn't there. So I didn't get to see it. I've only seen it on the website and a couple of people who had it. But until you get this thing next to you, look, hey, until you get this thing next to you, you just can't appreciate how big it is. Um, this is this is bordering along along the, the lines of like too big for a statue, unless this is the only statue you're gonna get and it's gonna be your centerpiece, all that kind of stuff. But um, as I finally got this together and I, as I turned this around, I was blown away. Figurama continues to just set the bar so high until they're going to screw themselves at some point because they're going to not deliver. Because so far, every piece that I have gotten from them, you see Devilman vs. Zalman, you saw Trigun, you got this guy, and other pieces that I don't even have that I've seen other people say the same things about, that each release they just keep, in my opinion, making the bar so high with the engineering, the sculpting, and everything about these pieces because this has got to be, the physics just involved in getting something together like this that you can get 3D printed, get, get molded, and all that kind of stuff, and then package it to get it to consumers and not be broken or anything like that. All of that in itself is just, just really huge. And so, like I said, I got this not broken or anything, but... I guess what we can do is just start talking about Alucard just in general. I'm going to go into big detail about it. But what you have is you have 
Hell's, Alucard from Hell's He's in the most dynamic pose this character can be in. And I say that because what you're looking at here is level zero. You're looking at him at his fullest potential of power. And what's interesting about Alucard is that he is the most powerful being in anime. Nothing can beat him. No one can beat him. You would think that because of that, he would be a boring character, but he's not. He's not boring at all. I think the fact that he does have this unlimited power to do whatever the hell he wants to do pretty much how he uses it um in the anime makes it more interesting each episode that you want to watch to see what happens next or what does he do next or how does he keep this interesting and he manages to do that in the anime and so what you have here is you have him in this state where he's in this huge dynamic pose where he's transforming into this beast and to this creature or whatever you want to call it, kind of made out of blood. And, and when you look at it, you see he has all of these eyes, that, I mean, hundreds of eyes all around it. And you're like, what the hell is going on with those eyes? What you're looking at is the eyes of all the souls through the millennia that Dracula or Elicard has consumed. And he's able at this height of his power to summon the power of all of those souls throughout eons. And he can use that in the most destructive manner. And it's not good enough for him just to kill you, which he could do, just for the blink of an eye, he could kill you. He's got to eviscerate you. He's got to make you suffer. And all of that is shown in this statue. So as you see this creature being formed, and on the base here, you have all of these, I think they are Nazi soldiers that are caught up in this destruction of this beast and it is literally ripping them apart. And so the base has so much detail, so many elements, so many things going on. You could talk about it for days. So for example, the most the, the, the centerpiece of the base, if, if you will, is this guy here that just cracks me up. This is like the, the culmination of, of how gruesome this guy is in terms of Alucard killing somebody. You've got him in midair. As he's transforming into this beast, shooting this guy in the top of the head, you can see his brain splattering out there. But that's not it, guys. That's not it. As he shoots him, you see his two eyes right there, bulging out of his head. There's like, boom, out of his head. His two eyes right there, blood. It is gory as hell. Guys, this is not for kids. This is a grown-up video because there's a lot, of, a lot of bad stuff happening here. So kids, go away. Um, and then this guy is in such a contorted uh, pose. His elbow is broken off. You can see the bones inside of his elbow here. Lots of detail in that. It's pretty freaking gruesome. He's just all sorts of contorted here. And he's still holding on to the gun. A lot of detail on the gun too, by the way. Still holding on to the gun. And so as you go around, you can see the terror on the faces of the people being consumed and being... Um, eviscerated by this power. Uh, this guy's got his tongue hanging out here, leaning across the whites of his eyes. This creature has started to just consume him. These are more souls, more souls Alucard's consuming right now. And then you've got all of these characters inside of here, these, these soldiers, the same thing happening right here. These are bad guys, by the way, but that doesn't mean Alucard's a good guy because he's not a good guy either. He just does what he does. Um, and he has his own agenda, and it is not to save humanity at all because he kills humans. He, he hunts his main uh, prey as other vampires, but he will kill anybody, good or bad. And so here you got, and here these other soldiers that are being consumed, you got this one poor soul here trying to, you know, in a futile way, shoot into this beast that is going to do no harm whatsoever. There's an actual scene in one of the episodes of the anime that actually shows almost this exact scene. Uh, of these soldiers being consumed that way. And then in here, you've got this lamppost or whatever, or street, street lights that are being broken, uh, like a tornado is hitting this almost. And you have another broken street light down here. And the detail in all of these is just great. They have this uh, plastic here. And I'm not gonna say plastic, but what it's meant to look like is glass. And it does look like this frosted glass here. But the one down here is is cracked. And what's really cool is that I didn't think of this until I started reviewing this. As I look at this, there's a light here, you know, just to light the, the figure, but it's shining through this lamp, the street lights. 
And it would be kind of cool if that had a light up feature where it kind of flickered and as if it was being destroyed. But it looks really fantastic the way that they have this here. And then as you look at the rest of the base itself, when you're looking at the rock and the stone and all of the debris, the, the amount of sculpting and detail that has gone into this is insane. Um, and then you have these wooden beams that are protruding out that are broken off. You have a concrete uh, pillar with rhubarb coming out of it. This, And it just looks realistic too. And this twisted metal is what it looks like here. Um, and that's, that's the base. I mean, it just keeps going. And then at the base here, at the very bottom, love this touch here. You've got the eyes all around the base, all the souls that are encapsulated in this particular creature that's being formed. Something that's not on the base, that should be on the base, is this fence here. And there are two pegs that are identifiable on the fence here, and then there are two peg holes here. But I had a hell of a time trying to get both of them to fit in at the same time. I could only get one in at a time, and it doesn't stay in very well. So I just decided to take it off. I'm gonna go and watch someone else's video and see if there's something that I'm not doing to get that in there, but I didn't have time to do that. I wasn't in the mood at that point. I was a little bit too frustrated. But, <clears throat> again, let's go around here. Just magnificent detail. One really cool aspect about this piece is, you know, as he's creating all of this destruction, you really can look at this from two different points of view. You can see him here in his humanoid form, and you can see what he's doing as a human. But if you turn this around and you look at it here, you basically can see a completely transformed Alucard into this monster that has consumed all of these characters. I really love the perspective here. Um, this is one of those pieces that you really want to be able to see all around it, which is hard to do, I mean, a lot of times, because you have to decide how you're going to display it unless you have it on the turntable that turns or whatever. But that's just a really awesome perspective when you're looking at it from this angle. It would be nice, I guess, if you sat it and displayed it this way where you can see both sides of it or walk around it. But as you look at this angle, when I see this, all I see when I see this is the creature that has consumed all of these souls. And you can see the remnants of his cape. That's all that's left. And then on the other side again, the humanoid form of Alucard. I think I want to just talk about this creature that's forming. The motion in this transformation is so evident. As you see the swirling of these eyes and this blood or whatever it is, this energy, blood, the whole nine, everything that's swirling around here, you can just see the motion. I mean, it just flows. You can see it. And throughout all of this, nothing but eyes of the souls all the way up into the head of this beast. Um, looks like a wolf there. You can see the nostrils and the nose and everything. And then this wicked tongue. His tongue is just sick looking. Um, it looks all slimy and everything, which is really freaking awesome. And then his teeth, the, 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 the uh, sculpting of the teeth just look menacing. This, this creature looks scary as hell, I'm just saying. He looks scary. Even as a statue, he looks scary. Um, turn them around, you can see the same thing, the flow of this. Now, I, 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 one other thing about the flow of this, this character, you can see how these soldiers here are being swept up into it, being caught up. This guy barely has a head, this comes off too. His head's barely sticking out there, and these guys, you know, in their last breath attempt to escape, which would never happen, they're never going to escape this, it's just done, they're, they're finished. Um, but, when I spoke about the flow of this, what I... One, one feature of this that I, I just absolutely loved, and that is the way Alucard fits into this. Because he is this creature. He's transforming. He's in the middle of a metamorphosis here. And so the way, this, this, this is a separate piece. He is. But the way that this goes around here and connects to this Devonar, this, this suit that he's wearing, this pretty, you know, clean jacket that he has on, and how it transforms, you can see from the paint application and everything, this actual suit is transforming into this beast. And the way that it, it, it fits in together, it looks seamless, but it's not. It's actually a separate piece altogether. He comes out and these little things are sticking out. But when you look at this, once you put it together, it looks like this statue is melded into the whole piece and he's transforming. 
and looks absolutely mm-hmm. just amazing to see that. I love the way they did that, and, and it just captures the anime and captures um, the 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 artistry of the anime. I I can't find the words right now, but I this is another one of those pieces by Figurama where. I saw the piece, then watched the anime because I wasn't a fan of the anime before this. And then I'm a fan of monsters and things like that. And you can tell by the statues I collect that I like this type of stuff. I'm even wearing, you know, like the universal monsters, the whole classic monster thing. I love that kind of stuff. So this was right up my alley and I had never watched the anime. Shame on me, but I love the anime now. Uh, It is just absolutely a stunning representation of that. So, talking about Alucard, again, he's in midair. He's shooting with his famous uh, 454 casual, the, 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 the revolver that he... Well, is it a revolver? No. The, you see the pistol that you know, he's shooting with, um, and he's aiming dead into that guy's head. You can see the explosion there. When he gets uh, a new gun, and it talks about the bullets and how they, they're exploding bullets and that type of stuff, that's in one of the episodes. Um, and you can see him just eviscerating this guy with the gun. Um, and then, a- as he's standing there, the-, the thing that is so eerie about Alucard is the pleasure on his face from what he's doing. It is almost, I won't even say that, because I'm not going to go that non-rated PG, but this guy's having fun doing what he's doing. That's the look on his face. It's so eerie to see him... Uh, doing such gruesome things, but he is a monster himself, but having that look. And so I think they captured this guy quite nicely because in the anime, he thrives on the chaos of this. Um, He knows that there is no one that can stand against him. He knows that, but he has so many intellectual ways of toying with them and and enjoying what he's doing. It's really disturbing. Um, And so... I guess that what does it say about me because I like the anime, right? <laughs> All right. So anyway, the portrait, love the portrait. This little tie right here actually comes off too and it fits on there, which is nice. And then as his cape is form, not forming, but there is, uh, his cape is transforming somewhat into all of these bats that are on top of the cape. Now, this cape itself doesn't I don't think it's resin I think I learned a new term some years ago when I reviewed uh, Black Panther in terms of statues it's polyurethane and I know a lot of companies use that when it comes to making pieces that could be very frail because that material it has some give in it some flexibility in it and it doesn't break as easily because had this been and I have had statues that are like that but had this been just um, resin I can see each of these pieces breaking off so easily. And because of what the material that it's made out of, it doesn't give. The whole cape comes off. Um, I wish I could have shown you the unboxing of all of that, but nah, it didn't work out for me. Maybe next time. Got some other things that I'm going to unbox. Um, his, his suit that he's wearing, uh, lots of detail and everything in his suit. Looks fantastic. Um, the, the stance that he's in, all of it is just amazing to look at. And that's one portrait. He has another portrait that we'll talk about in a minute. But before I get to that, let's talk about the paint application of of this guy. And you can see so many opportunities for things to go definitely wrong. This is nearly perfect. I found one eyeball, just one. I'm not going to take a picture of it, just take my word for it. One eyeball on the white of the eye, it looks like there's a speck of red. But then all I can I could say, hey, that's just blood, right? But none of the other ones have that, so I'm not gonna even buy that. One, one tiny little speck, and man, did I have to look to find that. I say it with that type of expression because that's how well painted this statue is. The shading all over the statue and every aspect of the statue is this is just fell off. That's why I'm gonna take it off, but it won't break. It it looks to be very um, durable, so I'm gonna take that off because I gotta figure out how to get that back on so it doesn't fall off. But the eyes, for example, the way they're painted, just perfect. I mean, I don't see any white touching the red, any of the pupils that are, it just, they, they're painted really nice. And then they all glossy. So they kind of look like marbles almost. And it's just eerie. There's so many of them um, looking at you. I have nightmares from this particular piece being in real the real world here. It's different than the anime. 
Um, this just looks gruesome. But the shading on the base with the concrete, the shading on the characters themselves, again, done very well. His flesh tone now talking about the shading and the, the paint application on his face. You can look at it, it's nearly painted perfectly. I, I can't show you a flaw because I don't see one on here. Um, so I, I don't know what to say. And, and then here you can see all the shading and everything there on his um, sleeve of his jacket and there's tons of shading on the cape itself. Look at the beast and how this, the black fades into the red, just looks amazing. The whole paint, the whole everything about it, it's just done very, very well, very well done. Um, now let's talk about the two portraits. Now, what I really love about this is that this is the um, collect the um, elite edition. I think yes, I think they call it the elite edition of this statue, and I think because of that, it came with this. Please. All of you other statue companies out there, including Figurama, because I think this is the first time you guys have done this too. Wouldn't it be nice if you guys either made one, allowed us to buy it, or it came with it as an exclusive where you can take these beautiful portraits, instead of putting them in the box or something, that you can display them like this. This is a fantastic representation uh, of, 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 of the character, able to be displayed with these two different portraits. You have the one here with the hat on. And I think it's hard for me to decide which way to do it because I like the way this one looks as this mini bus with the hat better than this one. But I also like the way that this is actually on top of the head itself. So that makes it hard for me to make a decision. But for right now, I'm gonna take this off, put it on so that you can see what it looks like with the other head. On it so that's what he looks like with that and then instead of putting this precious little portrait somewhere where it could get broken I get to put it on this now this little um, tie that's blowing up in the wind that comes off too the tie comes off and then there's a lot of detail and everything on the little um, statue itself the statuette and this turns out to be a really nice bust and compliment to the statue instead of you know i don't want a coin or a plaque or any of that crap that comes let me back up i'm gonna take the word crap back so please consider something like this because this is really freaking awesome so i'm gonna take this head back off and put it on here uh yeah i'm gonna put this one on here back and put this one back I think this is how I might just display them. But as you can see, both look fantastic, especially this little guy here with the hat on. He looks absolutely amazing. Um, pretty cool piece. And then um, sculpting on the back of it, you can see that that's wrapping around him, the blood that's wrapping around him there. And this little tie comes off too, so both tie comes off. I think you might be able to put that tie on there. I don't know. But anyway, I'll just leave it here. But it looks great. Fantastic. It, it almost looks like one solid piece the way this fits on here. So I'm very happy with this base. Thumbs up. Very, very huge, huge, huge thumbs up for that. The video's pretty long. We're probably at about 20 minutes now. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. I think I've talked enough about the statue. You get the point. I like it a lot. Uh, Figurama did a fantastic job, as I've already stated about a bazillion times. So remember, remember to always collect what you like and not the hype. Until next time, my friends. Peace.